Blessed love, my family. Oh, yes, give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie I. It is a joy that you have definitely stepped into the tiger's nest. Honorable Priest Isaac here with you. We're going to have a wonderful program as always today. We have the Honorable Priest Douglas Smith with us, and he will be speaking about his brand new book, talking about Rastafari in the 21st century, what life has taught I and I. So it's going to be an upful discussion. And of course, you know, the Honorable Priest is also representing the new faculty of overstanding within Rastafari. So he will also be giving us an update on the, the conference that should have taken place, I think it's this year in May around African Liberation Day. But of course, you know how the world has been running for a while. So that did not take place. So he will give us an update on exactly what the next step is. A wonderful looking cover here. Definitely full of unity. But before we go into the honorable priest who will be joining us very soon, I just want to highlight once again, as I promised you yesterday, yes, these are the first graduates really from the beginner's course of the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge Homeschool program, specifically dealing with African heritage and astronomy. So of course I didn't mention them to you yesterday and um, officially here they are. These are these are my family here definitely not blood related but of course over the time and uh, and and you know the moments that we have spent in this program here definitely there has been a bond that has grown you know even towards this family here. So give thanks once again for little Ashai and little Eloha Daniel um, Fibel, and of course their accomplishments going through the 10 months and more program with us as it relates to African history and heritage and of course astronomy. So let me just highlight now it's not just them alone, but I highlight them because they're the first two you understand they're the first two there are many other ones on the program as we speak and they're going through some people are halfway through some people are almost completed but they have completed the full program so give thanks to ashai fibel once again and eloha daniel fibel and also within their family structure we have shine fibel and tammy fibel the matriarch there of the family. They all partook of our um, homeschool international program that you hear us speak of all of the time. So once again, young ones, blessed love and give thanks for the accomplishment and give thanks for your hard work and all that you have put into your development, your evolution. And let me just show the family here in the tiger's nest, just giving you a quick idea of some of the, the creation from young Ashai and young Eloha Daniel. Yes, just showing you, of course, you know, that's the solar system. And of course, they, they also are highlighting the African heroes and heroines. Definitely, you could see Menelik II, Akhenaten, Marcus Mosiah, Garvey, Queen, and Zinga. And these are just some of the projects that they had to do um, in the course that we brought to them. So we are honored and we're very proud of them and we're thankful to them and their family for taking the opportunity to carry the thing to another level. And this is why I am encouraging you, my family, you should get your children and even yourself, you know, into the international homeschool program that we definitely provide for you. You don't have to wait until September. It's not about the new school year. We're ready to go. You know, if you contact me now, you can start the program right now, definitely. And as you know, for sure, the information comes to you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We already expressed that we're dealing with astronomy and African heritage. And of course, you would know, I'm sure that I have been certified in in the realms of archaeo astronomy and even if i wasn't certified by the italian university i still know what i know but for sure just so at least everything is official here and remember that we do this via video classes eh? 
video classes. So the video um, will appear in your inbox. That's your email every day. It's there. Just enough to keep the attention of the youth and make sure that they learn something that they can carry on. I mean, when you sit down with your children and you observe the package that we put together, you yourself will be amazed of the level of information that we bring into them. This ain't no twinkle, twinkle, little star. Eh? When they're done, they could tell you the mass of planets and the mass of stars and black holes and all of these different things. And we provide it in a way that a child could get it. So definitely, um, I would encourage you. I'm telling you, I ain't trying to sell you nothing. Believe me. I would encourage you because I know the value of this, especially when it comes to your child having a, a, a strong appreciation for the Afrocentricity. Trust me, I don't think there's a better deal around than you coming on board and being a part of the international homeschool program that we have. And you don't have to wait till next year, next week. You can contact me right, right, right now. For sure, just email us, priestisaac 27 at gmail.com and I could send you this brochure here that you're looking at again priest isaac 27 at gmail.com and I could send you this brochure via the email itself you could look through it and I could also send you a very short video giving you a little more detail and remember when you take the whole year's program you know the whole year's program you definitely get it at a, a more economical price it's only fifty dollars a month eh for for the program but if you do the whole full year which would be equivalent to five hundred dollars you get it for only three hundred dollars and as you could see for sure i'm talking about 10 months and more worth of information more than 160 uh, classes over that period and obviously you could see the sort of levels of works that the young ones are doing so definitely contact us and we will fill you up with more information as it relates to that and of course remember all payments can also be made using the paypal we have the paypal information not the paypal what you call the stuff what's the other stuff there the cash app the cash app no paypal don't try the paypal cash app cash app all right and the cash app information is right in the description below um, the link for the cash app is in the description and that is aton ra 27 23 and you could make your payments using that even for those who are you know on the shock of the hour or those who desire to send contributions and donations because ones have been hitting me up on that one about they want to send a contribution well it's all right just go to the description below you see the atonra 2723 cash app link you press the link and you do what you got to do and we will definitely get that in time anyone that is ordering any of our books or the shock of the hour or the international homeschool when you send that cash up please email us so we can know verify exactly that it was you all right so as i said in a moment we'll definitely have the good brother uh, brother doggy with us and we will be definitely going into uh, this reasoning here as it relates to Rastafari in the 21st century, what life has taught I and I. And this book was actually written uh, um, um, by the good brother, Brother Priest Douglas Smith and Brother Ijubalani uh, Tafari. And of course, uh, these are scholars in their own right. So we expect to get something good from this. So as we await the good brother, Once again, let me do say blessed love, give thanks for staying with us. And as promised, we do have the Honorable Priest Douglas Smith with us, also more so known as Priest Doggy, definitely a priest of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress Church of True Divine Salvation, even a member of the new faculty of overstanding within Rastafari. Africa uh, Rastafari movement 
and the good brother will be speaking to us this evening on several topics we want to touch upon. As I mentioned before he came in, we definitely will be delving into that brand new book, Rastafari in the 21st century. You know me, what life has taught I and I, interesting, I wouldn't say twist, but interesting, not plain either, but just how we utilize the words there, because you know, that's Haile Selassie's autobiography, what um, life has taught me. So what life has taught I and I, as such uh, a speech that the king gave, I should say, what life has taught has taught me. But anyway, we have the good brethren here, the Honorable Priest Dougie, for sure. And before we go into the book, we are going to be, you know, kind of talking about some of what the new faculty of understanding within Rastafari has been doing. I always have the title, you know, there's a lot of words, don't feel no way. I think, yeah, but we're going to be talking about some of the works that has been done. There was six uh, seminars, if I'm not mistaken, six or seven seminars via the, the, the internet, where we touched upon different subject areas, economics, culture, um, religion. I myself, I was privileged and honored to be in one of those, um, one of those um, evenings session where we were speaking of economics at that time. I was honored to be a part of that panel. And at the same time, there was a special conference that was planned for this year, 2021. It should have been in May. I think it would have been either around the 5th of May or the 25th of May. We have been speaking of that for some time as well. But of course, everyone know what has been taking place on this little globe as it relates to different um, pandemics that are flying around here and there. So that did not come off at least how it was originally planned. But as I said, the Honorable Priest Dougie is with us to speak about that and the book and many other things. So let me just turn the floor over to him, at least to say, blessed love, my Lord, give thanks for your presence. Blessed love. Blessed love, Honorable Priest Isaac. Give thanks yes. for the freedom to be here to share a little song with the eye listening audience. We also give thanks, you know, for always taking time out to listen and view this reasoning. Yeah, it's been a very traumatic year and a half dealing with this pandemic and mm. the life change. Why and I, Father is in control, we leave all of that level of control to him and control the things that is in I and I powers to control. Gotcha. So we give thanks. Yeah, the, the, the new faculty, the African Rastafari new faculty of overstanding is a mission that has taken a year and a half to culminate. A lot of research, a lot of reasoning, hours and hours of reasoning and dissecting and, and, and you know, looking at the past and the present to kind of chart a map to the future. Making sure that we leave facts, historical facts, scientific facts in place for the future generation. And not just leaving with them I and I beliefs and I and I myths and I and I allegories and you know phobias and you know things like that. Okay, sometimes the, the, the fact and the myth become a little clouded and people tend to not be able to distinguish between both. You know, so I and I job, duty, you know, like the father said, place the food within the children reach is to do just that, you know. So over the year and a half, I and I have been there. First of all, there is a, a group of I and I who is seated, who facilitated, you know, the discourse within the community. And when we say community, we mean from the continent to the diaspora. You know, we have been having these conversations on, first of all, are we still on the mission? One, is it the mission of the founding fathers? You know, and, you know, is it still pertinent in this 21st century? And if so, if we have deviated how and why, how do we get back on track, you know, knowing that, you know, these, this is several decades later, you know, when most of I and I founding elders have 
transition. So how do we identify the original mission that brought about the birth of the new name of the almighty Rastafari? So after a year and a half of reasoning, you know, on this committee, you had you know, attorneys, economists, professors, grassroots activists, Pan-Africanists in general, which we all are. You know, so we were looking at everything to that full spectrum. What is legally you know, binding? What is obsolete? You know, what is worth revising and bringing forward? You know, all those aspects were factored into the, 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 the concept. Um, we have finally culminated everything. We sent out a, a reasoning and response questionnaire, which was sent forward by many ones. We had, like I said earlier, several webinars with different distinguished guest speakers who spoke on different topics, you know, um, all recorded and um, transcribed so and I could have studied it and use it as the basis for the document that was drafted. We have finalized the document about a week now, and we are looking to have an official launch of the document on the 23rd of July. And when we say an official launch, we are, we are looking to put it in the public space at that time for everyone to have access to, to peruse and see you know, what it is. It's a 13 page document and it is legally done, but done in the most simplest terms that everyone can understand it. You know, we have tried, um, as we are all not perfect, we have tried to do as perfect a job as possible, in, including everyone's input and staying true to the original mission, you know, and the original foundation on which Rastafari is built. Yes, I give thanks. No pause. Yes, my Lord. Well, as far as the, the whole, I know everything was supposed to come together and I guess climax to some degree in Ethiopia this year, which would have been in May. Yes. So we're in July now. I know you just gave an outline of what will be happening, but as far as what should have happened on that level, because that was a big thing, would that still yep. be taking place? Would it be taking place on a, an online level or are we waiting for things to kind of settle down on the planet and maybe plan for next year or the year after? Well, this will be pretty much a virtual. Ones will be gathering in different places which will be linked into the virtual presentation, you know, because the, the ones- And this is the 23rd of July? Yes, I. The ones, oh, okay. the ones that have participated that are together in Jamaica, hopefully they'll be able to be in one spot. Um, the ones in, in Azania and in Ghana, in Ethiopia, and I and I here in the US will be gathering and, you know, it will be a, a program, a well put together program to present it to the world um, for the quality and standard document that it is, okay. And um, I'm not, um, I'm not bigging it up. Maybe we use one language. I'm not bigging it up because it is I and I was a part of it. No, I am bigging up the document because a document of this um, scope, content, mm -hmm. and importance never existed before that represented the Rastafari movement. Put it this way, we were always a, a, a people without a constitution. Just like how the emperor saw Ethiopia in, in its time needed a constitution and gave them the first constitution, um, we have been a nation without a constitution. So what that means is that we were le our borders were left open for infiltration and for anyone to interpret 
you know, I and I culture and I and I way of life according to their perspective. This document will help to codify the African Rastafari perspective of, of I and I tribe and will be able to be represented in many areas, whether you want to take it to court, it's, it's a legal document, used in schools for the children that are getting oppressed and, 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 and restricted from attending school because they carry locks and so forth, or they want to, to um, not partake of certain rituals and all of that. Even within Terra. Exactly. This document helps them to establish that right because it is a right we're not begging anything. This is a right established by the, U the United Nations um, Human Rights Charter. One, established by all constitutions that give people the right to practice their faith. You know, so this document will help I and I know Rastafari, especially the African Rastafari, to establish that right. See, um, like I say again, whether in school, workplace, wherever it is a document that can be produced. We've been having a lot of um, chaplains from around the world, not just the US, but from around the world. In we're in Rastafari have, you know, fallen some problem. And in some cases, ones in those um, confinements have seen the light as, as, as such and want to live the live. But those chaplains that, that run the faith based you know, initiative, they don't know what is Rastafari, what constitutes a Rastafari. They don't know anything about Rastafari, how to minister to these brethren, what rights should they, these brethren be allowed, and all of that. So this document also will help in those areas you know, where brethren are in confinement and they want to still maintain them liberty. Now, this helps them to assure that right. You know, so it's a it's a vital document, and like I and I say, we will be launching it on that level, so the world can acknowledge it for what it is. And the it doesn't matter who put it together. We, I and I, who were the vessels of 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 drafting it, we are the least important. I and I names is not even important in in in, in the aspect of things. Right, right. It's but just for clarity, because this is such an important thing. So the 13 page, the 13 page report, the 13 page document. Um, that's but yeah, we call it a declaration. We call it a declaration. So okay, so what so is that that is the document there then? Is not nothing to go over, nothing that done there. No, yeah, why I ask sense. you that is because um I know even in some of the webinars you would have heard different ideas. You know, um, I would say more so than less, we all had a similar theme almost every time. But you would have had, a, you know, certain times where ones would have had um, ideas that didn't correspond with others. So, so that's what I was asking if the 13 page document that you're speaking of, if that's the, the complete declaration or it's just like, let's say an idea to put out on the table and by the 23rd when we gather we'll put everything in order and that will be just for clarity so at least the audience could understand we um, say this already is, this is the finished document um this is the finished okay. document okay just ask him and like i and i say you know we have we have solicited the input of both our academians our intellectuals, our mm -hmm. wide okay. mind, and our grassroots um, to, to put this document together. So hopefully the wider family that might think that they did not participate in the drafting of this document wow. will, know, will know that I and I are them, Ubuntu. Yes. And the reason being, you know, there's a whole saying, too many cooks spoil the broth. Everyone included, every idea could not be practically infused. Mm. This document is based on, like and I said, a declaration of what was the original mission, which we, do, we, have no, we have no control at this point over what was the original mi mission. All our duty is to do is to present the facts of what was the original mission. Then now I and I can 
at this time, look at where we are. What has Rastafari been doing? You know, for most of I and I, we know that Rastafari over the last couple of decades have been stagnant, you know, docile, um, voiceless to a level. You know, you haven't heard the Rastafari since, since the trading of certain elders. You don't see a letter going to the Queen or going to UN or going anywhere. You know, issues have happened where normally Rastafari elders would have chimed in with their sound and you don't hear no sound. So the, the voice of the Rastaman has been silent a lot and we have been stagnant, stagnant as a movement. Because remember, you know, it is the Rastafari movement from lowland to highland is a movement. And if you're not moving, you're not a movement. See, and that was one of the to sit down and assess and do this assessment. And this is not about no religious beliefs, my brother. And I, I don't I want none, I, I don't want none of your listeners to draft in, you know, to be biased by these things. This is not about religion. True, yeah, talk about, to them. It's not about partisan politics. This is about governance. This is about structure. This is about historical fact. Why did Rastafari come into being? As a resistance to colonization, you understand? Oppression, downpression, brutality, the injustice, inequality. That is why I and I came into being to defend the poor and the have not, the voiceless and the disenfranchised. That is why the indigenous people of the world have, have gravitated towards I and I and have given I and I the right to speak on even their behalf. <laughs> Because the mission was clear when the founding fathers established it. See, over the years, a lot of infusion and deviation has taken place. The scholarless society thing that they're bringing and us, multiculturalism and, and all of that. It sounds nice. Diversity is great in its right form and perspective. But until the justice that has been taken, brutally taken from the African people, is returned to I and I until I and I humanity is reestablished. See, none of that don't mean nothing to I and I. That is just giving them a pass. You understand? To step around I and I, step over I and I, and continue to govern I and I. Even though them say I and I emancipated and the islands are independent, there is no practical visual presence of that. Because I and I depend on the IMF and the World Bank. I and I depend on America and England. I and I depend on all kind of outside forces for I and I sustenance. See? So these realities is what brought about Rastafari. Is Rastafari to be addressing those realities? Self-preservation and self-reliance. You understand? Self-governance. Is I and I established and, and respected? And Standard. as we see Power when you can see to power, you know. So a people down on their knees cannot exhibit any power. We have to rise up off our knee and become a force. Now, once I was say, oh, you're going to do that, and black people now. No, we come from the richest continent in the world. We just have allowed our continent to be abused, to be raped and pillaged while we sit over here squabbling over who have turned up red and turned down red, who eat fish and who this and you know, a giant politics, I say, who is PMP and GLP, Democrat and Republican and all these things. While our fields are bushed over, we they mm -hmm. attend to some other people feel. So this is why I and I sat down as activists within the movement. Everyone that has Definitely. been a part of it yes. is known to be workers in the movement. Yes, yes, that is true. And we have sat down with the concern of the movement. There is nothing in this that, that is of any self-aggrandizement. There is nothing here for a man to come spot Jaddi and I'm sure and say good work. There's no good work here. There is duty. And that uh, is what we uh, a duty call, a clarion call was made, and we answered that clarion call and we tried to establish what the call asked for. See, we devoted our time, personal resources, sacrifice our, our family time that we would spend with our family, time that we would spend on our downtime from hustling and all of those things to work on this for the 
future generation. Not so much for I and I, because you can't teach an old dog no trick, and you can't, you can't train a, a fully grown tree. See? So we are trying. What you can do. Yes, we are trying at least give the youth, them, the next generation, a fighting chance at identifying their reality with less hassle than I and I had. It took I and I a whole lot from King James and inversion. You understand? To we are now, we have we have now regained back our promise key and 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 and, and parchment scroll and, and 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 these things now that are ours. You understand? But we 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 started off with only the King James version, a symbolic mixed up coded book that our genius elders, our in the ingenuity of our genius elders was able to decode and find I and I blackness and I and I reality in it and present it to I and I. They were able to look through that whitewash, what, what them call white nationalism, see, and find out where the origin of it come from which was out of the black theology, the black concept, that ancient concept, like his majesty say, Ethiopia have one of the woolish versions of the Bible. So we could go forward to that ancient say and look and say, yeah, you know, say, the man them who them say was Moses and the man, the man was Jedlock's black man, you know? I hear that. So let me ask you, the, the, since it's on a governmental level, and um, I, I, I will say for sure, I don't make that clear. That is, that is something I defend, that is something I uphold. Um, but the, the new faculty, have you gotten the blessings as such from the individual Rastafari houses and organizations internationally? Or is it um, a case where, because the reason why this is being done, you know, is because it's it's obvious that there's a certain level of unity. You just explained it and governance and just, you know, just responsibility that is somewhat lacking amongst us. No one pointing no finger. We pointing our fingers at ourselves because, you know, it's, if, it, if it's good is we and if it's bad is we. So, so no one must feel offended for nothing that even I am saying at the moment. But it's just obvious man, that it, it, the governance of it internationally, even the different so-called houses, uh, I always encourage ones to work amongst them houses. I think that's the, where the strength will come, where when all these houses become strong and then we see a betterment amongst the unity because there are different ideas. I, I'm, I'm an individual. I'm never, I'm never in a rush to be arguing over different ideas, King. Trust me, I'm never ever in a rush. But you know for sure, if push comes to shove, I can hold my corner hard. But anyway, why, why, why I'm putting it this way? Um, is it the case that the new faculty is, you know, just going forward, whoever on board, as you said, all that are on board are, are in one way or the other, somebody that is doing something in the Rastafari community, which you explained to me, international. And you're correct, because I don't think uh, it'll be a wonderful day when everybody working on the same page, but as far as I see, that's something difficult. So are you just putting it forward, knowing that the, the power that it has, it will benefit all Rastafari, whether they're on board or not? Because they're those that will not be on board. Whether they're on board or not, uh, we're just going along, not really looking for nobody's blessing. We're just going to do it. We already call. Whoever come, come. Who don't come? Well, no, no, no hard feelings. But we're going forward with this because at the end of the day, it will benefit everyone. We're sure about that. Or uh, you went out looking for the blessings from the Bingy House. You're looking for the blessings from the Boba Shanti House, what the Parliament had to say. You went to the 12 Drive House. You know, and just just to say, well, yeah, man, we totally with you, and they have their back in. Or how is that relationship going? And and well, we we only saying that because we know the reality of it. Eh? That's all. Trust me, we know the reality of it. Let us be factual, as they I say. You know, you can't please everyone. Yeah, There's that's no right. way to please everyone. 
And we laid the fact, we laid the foundation from the start of this reasoning. The Rastafari movement over the last decades have been stagnant. So if it's stagnant, it means the houses them stagnant too. I hear you. I hear you. And those realities in place. Now, in trying to approach the houses, which I and I, let me establish this before I get into that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this committee sits high ranking, but being a representative, have 12 tribe, have Bobo, have Osa Jed, it have different ones from different mansions involved, involved in more, of course, because if I just saw the panel, there was Sister Emma, there was mm. different ones on it from, we included every component of Rastafari in gathering this, 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 this information and culminating and drafting this document. Okay. Um, the problem now that exists is that in approaching mansions, the mansions are on a hiatus. They are on a hiatus trying to figure out themselves. Are we still pertinent in this 21st century? How can we be relevant again? Who is going to lead the charge? All of these things. So while that is going on, you know, you'll go to one and one set will say yes, and, 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 and another set over there said, but burn it because just, just the fact of the matter that that set over there so say yes. And that set over there is jacking for the leadership of, of the thing. And that's, you understand? Mm -hmm. So there has been that kind of politics involved, you know? Now, because of what this document is, this document, like the ISA, will represent every Rasta man and any seeing, conscious Rasta man that been fighting the same battles that all the iron have been fighting, fighting the same enemy of poverty, of injustice, you know, of, of brutality from the system of, of disenfranchisement. If when they take up this document and read this document with a clear conscience and a open mind from the first word to the end. And if them don't feel and see a power in it, well, I'm on, I, I, I would have wasted my, my home years in this movement. You understand? Don't worry, man, I believe now, man. <laughs> yes, my I'm love, give thanks. I, I think we have that um, clear, and um, that's a great strength there. It don't bring in stone either because like any, like any constitution or any document, you know, Mm -hmm. It is open for revision when it needs to be revised and if there needs to be amendments and things infused that become pertinent or ones I like that was, was overlooked, all that is open to be done because the legal minds are there to do it. Yes. You understand? Ready and waiting to do it when that documents become public and ones start to respond and, and, and make their their, their, their critics and their whatever, see? And so one thing we have to say, this document is not going away because it is needed. It is needed and if somebody has a better document or a better approach to trying to help solve the, some of the problems that face I and I, come forward, we're willing to work with the best idea or the best approach that is put on the table. This is not about ego. This is about practicality. This is about our life. This is about securing I and I life, I and I legacy, and I and I future. Give thanks. That point they done. Well, as I would say, clarion call me there. So uh, <laughs> definitely, if, uh, you know, if you have a better mm, outlook on it. But yes, my lord, I think that is good. Um, before we wrap up, we will just return quickly just to highlight how one can how one can be a part of the event on the twenty third. You know, so. I don't think it would slip me, but please remind me if anything. Well, yeah. once, can, once can go to the, the, the... Well, you can put it here. We can do that now then, yeah. But they can go to the new faculty, um, where, um, Facebook. Mm. All information will be on it. All linkage will be on it. Also, the, 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 um, the African Liberation Network of course. as well will have it on Facebook. 
you know, and we will be publishing it all over in, in, in using social media. So it will so, be, so it, you will, know, it will be live. I mean, it's, it, it'll be live on the, these platforms that you just mentioned, like live at the time. Yes, I streaming live. Very wonderful, very wonderful. And what time that will be Eastern Standard Time? And the, that's a Saturday, isn't it? The 23rd is a Saturday. It's a Friday. 23rd is a Friday. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. I think you're correct. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. We, we, because the day is a, day, a special day for Rastafari and there will be different celebrations and eyes is going on in the, in the evening and afternoon part. And I will be doing this in the morning to allow for the evening to be celebrative. And we'll also give ones a chance to reason about it when them gather them different re reasonings, and mm -hmm. you know, and to also uh -huh. celebrate the fulfillment that it that it exists. You know, something a, a little added spice for, for chant, like a bingi, far and towards. You know, yes, so we'll be doing it in the morning, and again, so the African continent can be a part of it because they are a very they are an integral, integral part of part. it. Yes, yes. Yeah, man, very much so, because that is the, that is where we are heading. We're leaving here, but that's where we're heading. So we have to have our brothers and sisters on the continent participate in it and helping to shine the light that Guy I and I want. Positive, positive. Rastafari in the 21st century, what life has taught I and I. Um, a, a very wonderful design here. I see a... Um, even within those coming home, you got a whole collaboration of different ones from elders to young ones, to male to female. It looked like the different houses there as well from Bobo Shanti, the Diabingi and uh, something else and something else and, and the king and the empress there. Mm, I see Africa in the background. Wonderful design. Are you the, that's King George yeah, I see behind there on the house. Marcus yeah. Garvey. Uh, mm, pardon me. Yes, yes sir. Yeah, man, got you, man. Yeah, 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 yes. Just uh, uh, admiring all the, as I say, King, not King, um, St. George, Kedos Girogis, as they would refer to him as in Ethiopia, conquering the dragon there in the background, waterfalls. Very wonderful, very nice. So Rastafari in the 21st century. You want to just give us a, a quick um, rundown on it? Well, this, this was is an email you shared with me earlier. I don't know if you've seen that too. Um, this is the chapter, chapter one, a tribute to the Rastafari patriots. And I see you have a list of names, Shepherd Alexander Bedwell. You seeing this here on your end? Let me make sure I'm, I'm sharing this book, here. I'm seeing the book, book cover. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, right. This is my email here personally. You sent this to I because I haven't gone through the book as yet. So just for the the audience you could see here the the chapter one the tribute to the the rastafari patriarchs shepherd alexander bedward um joseph nathaniel hibbert leonard p howell king emmanuel charles edwards ras um dermity how that how that pronounced derminite derminite pa ashanti bongo watu Rassam Brown, the teacher, Martin Moplana, Kumi, uh, Bongo Tani, Ras Sidney Da Silva, Ras Historian, Bongo uh, Iris Clark, Bongo yes. Shepan um, um, Fraser, and Jabones, and, and you go into other different things, tribute to the Rastafari matriarchs, all oh, my king, I read the king, so I have to read them, the man. Um, um, uh, a definition, that's an empress, a definition. A definition, Sister Pearl Campbell, Bobo Ashanti, Royal Carl, Naya Bingi Roll Carl. Oh no, wait, this is tribute to the, the uh, yeah, Naya Bingi Roll Carl, Ma Ashanti. So, them is, them is woman name here, Naya Bingi Roll Carl. It starts with, start with Sister Pearl Campbell, Bobo, and then you have the Bobo Ashanti Roll Carl that has several, um, talk about several different empresses. Oh, um, okay. Then you have, okay. <laughs> then you have the Naya Bingi roll call that have sev that talk about several different um empresses from Naya Bingi house because True. they have been strong mothers. Then it goes into some of the, 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 the more known matriarchs like right. Marshan, yes. Mama Bubble, mm -hmm. Nana Faraika, you know, yes. Mama Baby um, yes. Barbara Anna Blake, and Sister Minnie, all great matriarchs of the child, you know. Okay, true, my lord. Give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. I hear you. Yeah, but you were saying, as far as, you know, 
Although that alone give us an idea, you know, but as far as what brought this book to life. All right, as I say, um, this is a, even just the, the cover, this cover was designed purposely and specifically mm -hmm. for it. It was done by an artist. It, it is a, a drawing, not a picture, not a Photoshop, not a, it was mm -hmm. a direct artwork done by an artist. So mm -hmm. in, I commissioned the artist and gave him the specifics to, 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 to produce this, you know, so it could represent the, the work that was going to follow. Um, it is a series. Rastafari in the 21st century is, has been a topic that I and Ras Jabalani have been expounding on and using since the turn of this century. Um, we, have been, we have kept several you know, um, gatherings here in, 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 in Florida um, titled Rastafari in the 21st century, past, present, and future. Um, you know, so it, it's been a theme, that's the word. It's been a theme that I and I have been working with over time because we are now in the 21st century and we keeping this theme going to, to get ones in that frame of thinking that we have to get beyond the 20th century and the 19th century and back there to thinking about where we are right now and how do we get through this century and, and remain pertinent within the Pan-African struggle. Okay, so saying that um, this whole, this book itself came about because, you know, while reasoning and reasoning with certain elders, as I'm on moving to over the years, I'm an is a historian. So I have been privileged to sit at most of the elders them foot and to pick their mind and reason with them and learn from them and get the history from them. So in knowing and meeting all that I have met and I've been at so many of the conferences and the Naya Bingi gatherings in different places, my bridging and my sister in them prompt I and say, well, I need to put this history down on paper and don't make something happen to I and this knowledge leave with I because it's not many ones have been privileged to, 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 to be able to to, to chart this course here, you understand? Um, Rat Jabalan is the same, he's a multimedia journalist and over the years when I and I have tried to interview the elders, he would be the cameraman on site or the man that is writing down the topical points and all of that. So in helping I to, 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 um, to document these great ones tradition, see? So in being privileged, to have, you know, broken bread with these ancient, oh, nice. it became my night duty to write about these ancients, to tell their story, because too long have the hunter been telling the story, seeing about the hunt. It's time the lion tell him story now, because the hunter always claims him kill the biggest lion and mm. him do all of these things. Now the lion I tell him story, or the hunter when him see him drop him gun and run. Mm. It's, it's, it's that, on that basis that I and I decided to take up the challenge. So in 2010, 2011, and I put on the first word. So you know, after making certain trad, interfacing with certain elders, you know, interfacing with Rasai Vai, Rasai V, Ras Miguel, and what if I ones um, that, that knew certain elders as well to, to make sure that the knowledge that I have can be, you know, um, also proofed by others. Mm -hmm. See, and so we went into added research. We went into the archives of the newspaper, the Gleaner in Jamaica. We went mm -hmm. back into old books and all of those things to right, get right. to do the research. So now, this is the first of a series. I see that, that volume is, one. Yeah, this is the first of a series, and mm -hmm. I'm telling you, my brother. It is some information. This is just a, 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 well, a, a taste. This is just a taste of the item mouth of what is to come. And well, if the item look at this and approve it, then you can just can imagine that what is to come. Okay, well now hold on. Yeah. Okay, I see you mystically start with Bedward and Hibbert. They're coming down the line to some degree. Um, I don't see Dunkley there. Right, I don't see Dunkley there, and I see Powell come third, but. 
the kind of scholars that you're working with. I don't even want to go to the depths of that because um, the, the brethren that the brethren that write the the uh, uh, the book and um, Powell, I'm sure you know him personally, um, Michael um, Barnett, that's his name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. So at the university, when he was speaking about the whole aspect of that, and he had another professor, another RAS with him, and they were talking about that they have elders still amongst them that would tell them that, hey, they praised in Haile Selassie even before he got crowned emperor. They were saying mm -hmm. that since he got crowned Negus in 28, a lot of the, the, um, the, the, what do you call it, Kumina, Kumina and the, the, the Poco vibes would have taken up hailing the king even before coronation. And I found that history quite interesting. And they're saying that there are ones amongst that can still say that. Not taking nothing away from no one, you know, just showing ones how deep, you know, the, the history is. Because the same way that we get, we get religious about religion, we get religious about history too. Eh? So it's not no, taking away nobody's title. And I, I'm only saying that as I observe your chronology, as I said, you know, one may feel Leonard P. Howell, you know, would have been at, at the top front. And let me just put it that way. But for whatever reason, King, when no one no, gets the book. No, I don't know. It's not for whatever reason, you know. Go ahead. And this is that thing I'm going design. to say when no one gets the book, they will know. But if you yeah, want to explain it. Thing, you. As we are reason, we want the listening audience to hear too. Of course. You know, from, 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 from I and I research point of view. Now, while we honor Leonard Howell for his era in the Pan-African struggle and what yes. he did, and we, we, we lovingly call him first Rasta, right. the concept of Rastafari didn't begin just there at okay. Pinnacle. It, it began before that. Howell just was privileged to to, to, to make the child overseas, mm -hmm. get certain information firsthand that was different from the Bible information and was able to come for the Jamaica now and, ex, you know, and, and, and elocute that in his street meetings. Yeah. But prior to that, now, Alexander Bedward, who has been done a disservice mm -hmm. by society, by propaganda, by the status quo, we have to do him justice. And we saw this as a chance to do that. Tell me now, about that. Alexander Bedward, he is known as a healer, a faith healer, okay, coming out of Augustown. Now, Alexander Bedward, just like the rest of the elder, they made the same trad, went to Panama, went to Costa Rica, went to Cuba. The same trad where all of the elders them did within the Caribbean and so forth in, you know, searching out certain things and in you know trying to establish the movement he made that same journey even before a lot of those that followed him okay beyond that he came back to jamaica and when he came to jamaica he met um a bishop shakespeare who was running a church in augustown with a nice size flock, a, a nice sized congregation following him. Bedward loved what Shakespeare was teaching because he was teaching a self theology, you know, God within self, look within self and not look outside of self for the revelation of the father, seeing which is what Rastafari come manifold itself. All right. So the fact that he was teaching this, but he was up in age and Shortly thereafter, he was ailing and he knew he was going to pass. So he called his congregation together and he handed that congregation off to Alexander Bedward because at the time he saw Alexander Bedward, he saw something in him and he prophesied before retreating into the cave where he was dwelling in Augustown and to never be seen again. He prophesied that Bedward would rise a large following that would transcend Augustone and Jamaica, which he did. Okay, he took over the flock and he started to lead them. He established the first known post-slavery camp 
you know, free camp. Not somewhere where you're, where some man run where and it's, you know, just a camp out in the bush, but a free camp in Augustown called the Union Camp. There, he taught people self-sufficiency. It was a self-sustaining community. Mm. They didn't work outside. They made everything for themselves, did everything for themselves. So you they built, go before Pinnacle here. Yes, man. And they built one of the most beautiful churches that if, if ones do their research, they, will, they, they can read about. Um, a stone-cut church that them say at the time was, a, was one of the, the magnificent monuments of, of, of the Western Hemisphere. That is how I, I, I that is what I, the writing I came across the, um, describing it, okay? That his craftsmen built. That's how skilled the craftsman was among him. So those kind of people that was among him could easily go out into society and make money, make their you know, money amongst the society. But they chose to reside within the commune and give their skills to that commune. And it, it thrived. He started to heal people on the banks of the Hope River because he found that the Hope River was a mineral spring. And it had high mineral content. At the time, they didn't know that it was mineral or whatever, but them just know it was a healing spring. That's why them have in Jamaica you have old folklore songs that was written about him. Dip them bedward, dip them, dip them in the healing spring. That's the uh, See? So there, there are several songs that was written about him. But anyway, he established his camp, taught them self-sufficiency, and he was pounced and just like pinnacle, saying. The, the, the governor of Jamaica, the, 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 the ju chief justice, and the archbishop of, of, of the, 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 the Catholic Church, who were the powers at the time, they had all midnight meeting to discuss this man and what they're going to do with him. They concocted all kinds of things to try and remove him until finally they did get the chance when they you know, he had a day when he called it a day of reckoning, where he had a march from Augustown heading to downtown Kingston, wanted to go to the parliament house. And they blocked off the route to downtown Kingston and forced the, 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 um, the crowd to go down, straight down into halfway tree, which that is on a different point from downtown. Um, Kingston, where, where um, the parliament house is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then they corral them in this big parking lot of, of, of one of the ministry them, see, and there they arrested Bedward and, and 300 of his followers and tried them, and the history is there, okay? He kind of, uh, he kind of a, a phrase, you know, when he explained that. The white, there is a white wall and a black wall, and the white wall has surrounded the black wall and is trying to, 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 to snuff out my words, snuff out the black wall. And, you know, the Almighty is going to rise up the black wall at some point, and the black wall is going to be victorious. See, he also demanded of the Jamaica government if you can give my people justice and equal rights, send me home to Africa. We want to go home to Africa. So he is one of the first men to come with that back to Africa theology, philosophy, ideology. See? Mm -hmm. And because of that, he became a threat to the status quo. And they, ex I mean, got rid of him with extreme pre prejudice, virgin. So, you know, I and I couldn't make him, him history just fall by the wayside. So, you know, because of the status quo and their propaganda. So we went and did our research and we brought our knowledge to the table and ones will be able to read about Alexander Bedward in this book. That, then you have- um, Go ahead. Then you have Nathaniel Hibbert, who mm -hmm. everybody knows, we call him the science man, the science raster, who even before Boba, Boba Ashanti was the robe and turban wearer. You know, mm -hmm. he had done himself in robe and turban and, 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 and had his lance, had, had some form of sword that he wore as well. That's you Nathaniel know. Hebert. Yeah, man, he had this kind of church called military get up. Because while he had on the robe and the turban and all that, he still had on these other insignias that symbolify that, that ones would wear on their army uniform and so forth. So he merged the two concepts. 
saying, and they, they said that he was a science man because he, he, had, he still had knowledge of our African spirituality that he practiced, seeing that because that knowledge was not prevalent, you know, you know, anything that people don't really know them fear. Yeah. So they call, they call him the science man because of that. Anyway, he was a very vocal person, a very um, serious elder within his time. He did a lot of street corner reasoning. He was, his, his, his region, his base was a, was a base of reasoning where many of the elders that went on to become prominent elders of the Rastafari movement, like Dada, Prince Emmanuel, King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, he used to visit. Edward. Nathaniel, yeah, Nathaniel at him at him at him thing. He, he passed through Bedward yes. in the early days. He also Hibber. passed through Bedward before Bedward was, 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 was vanquished though. But he used to he used to definitely visit um not Hibbert, you know, mm. because Hibbert, Hibbert had it to say that even the Roban Turban chart that that I took up came via him. So 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 Hibbert said that. Yes, in, 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 in said that in 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 in, 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 our, in our interview. Sure. That is documented. Yes, I. So so let me ask you because um um. So we're talking about Rastafari chart and Rastafari history. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a video you would see with the elder Bongo Watu, and um. I didn't have this at all to ask, but since you're on that level of discussion, and in that video, he was actually conversing with the Honorable Priest Paul, as if they were in Shashamani, Ethiopia, sometime in the 1990s, late 1990s, more than likely. And um, so he was saying that, well, he clearly said, clearly, I'm not putting no words in the mouth, that is he teach Prince Emmanuel Rastafari, and uh, as Bongo was saying that. And he said when he met him, he had his head wrap up. That's what he said. And he was practicing something else, preaching some other doctrine, and he had to rebuke him. Now, especially since you brought in that Prince Emmanuel was around um, Hibbert's camp and, and um, Bedward's camp and I've even heard one speak of Howell's camp too. So I would get the impression that let's just say his, his exposure to Rastafari would have come quite a bit before maybe Bongo Watu, who of course is an esteemed elder himself, but before he would have buck up upon him and that street corner as he explained. What say you? All right, well, first of all, Back in the day, the man them used to trot from camp to camp. If my current analogy is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, the man them used to trot from camp to camp to reason. And I, I, I have sat with Bongo Water many times, reason with Bongo Water, ask, interview Bongo Water, ask him all kind of questions about Dada. See? Um, and like yeah, him said, Dada used to ride a bicycle, come a, come a trench town, run a house, run a, I think it is 8th Avenue or 8th Street, run a trench town there. And, them used to come, Dada used to come on, they come reason. Now, Dada was already, Dada, Dada was already himself, Rastafari, mm. see? The reasoning that took place at these different camps was to, was to coin or create the ideology, to create the narrative, you understand? The rhetoric that the man mm. was going to expose out there. That was where that come from. The reasoning was to analyze the Bible, dissect the Bible, and to clarify the Bible. That was what those reasonings were for. And when they reached a level of understanding or overstanding within them, them, them clarity, they took to the street corners to share that knowledge with the people themselves. See? But the schoolwork was done in class at those hard knocks colleges. Yes. You know, of Trimstone and Bakawal and Firehouse and Pinnacle. You understand? Wherever Rastafari was, Dada trotted there to hear mm. what the man would say, what different truth they had on it. You understand? Now, ones want to, because of the religious 
Yeah. Mindset that. That, that most of I and I have. Ones want to, man without father, without mother, without beginning of days or ending of time is the de declaration for Melchizedek. Man want to apply that to the father. I don't fight it. I don't, I don't oppose it. I don't. <laughs> that man free to do what they want to do. But because of that kind of interpretation, seeing and religious mindset, they don't want to hear that Dada can learn something from somebody else too. And that Dada taught other people as well. It is a reciprocal process. You know, yeah. knowledge is not in a vacuum. It don't, when, even if this, the Bible tell you when Christ trod out at 13 and trod out to go find himself, and find a mission and know what him life was about. He tried it to various places to reason with, with, with the sages and the elders and the ones them, the wise minds. So him could determine himself, find himself and him cause and him destiny and fulfill it. See? So him got learn from those ones, even though he taught them as well. You understand? So we must be yes, must be realistic in our in our approach to life fire. We yes, you know. The supremacy that we preach is all right to bolster our confidence. But let us back now our, our chronology of history with facts and reality. And not because nothing we do can make Dada any greater than he is. Dada did his work. Dada did, I mean, history has recorded what Dada has done for his people. People come from all over the world that I have met some of them that said they heard of Dada from way over the way over in a way, way. You understand me? People from Sweden back in the day we come to the Governor General inauguration and, and looking for I and I and you know, book I and I and ask I and I how they can leave the father for pay them tribute. Because them hear of the work what the father do for years on behalf of people of color. See, and so nothing we can do and nothing we can we we we, we say can make the father any greater than who he is. He is who he is. I am that I am, you know. So I and I don't have to, to, to sex up the history, gas up the history or reinterpret the reality to sound mysterious and mystical to make that a come off any greater. No, we can't do that. Just like with Eilis Selassie, whether you take away the titles from him, whether you take away the, the religious, the defender of the faith, aspect from him, it doesn't change the greatness of his imperial majesty and prior the first. His mm -hmm. work stands for itself. And it's the works of the man, him say, if you don't know me from my words, look at my works. It's the works of the man, them, I come as a team. See, and so this whole mysticism that we love to create because of the religious mindset I have is what caused these, these attitudes. Dada reasoned with water, he gravitated to aspects of what Watto said more than likely. And in the same way, if Watto is truthful in Dada expressing his interpretation, him Watto learned something too. And why I said that? I was with Watto. I was, Watto was with I and I here in Florida when the father transitioned. We had just not too long finished a, 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 um, a Rastafari. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, yeah, a, a conference here where Rassis came from all over the world to this conference. Yeah, man, he speak about that. And he was here with I and I. That is why I tell you I get to reason with him on our levels because he was here, I and I housed him and everything. He um, transported him around and all of that. So when I and I went by the house and gave them the word that the father had transitioned, what a, what a um, attitude was now, him now believe that. A man can't tell him that. He must go, go back to Jamaica, go hear that and see that for himself. Nah, I believe that. See? And he took down, right after that, him just took down. He got sick. Right here in Florida with I and I. It's like the news just take with the last little energy that him had fighting whatever it was he was fighting at that time. And he took down. See, that was his attitude. The day when I, when I, gave him the word and gave the word in those because it was just it wasn't just him alone it was jabones um sam brother sam sam brown um and others that were there and he could see it upon him seeing him didn't glory him never make no sound but yeah i did know so them and there are some little idiot sound with some ones would make he was directly shocked by it and taken aback by it because he respect the man there him respect all the man they live him thing over the years and never bow. You understand? That was his take on Dada. 
that I had his own way, but his a man went never back off a repatriation and never bow to the system. See, and that was his outlook on that. See, so the man him learn and respect the one another aya. It's I and I, the flock, who come and create this competitiveness. They were complementing each other as they were fighting the same struggle of resistance against evil Rasta. See, they were allies, they were brothers, they were comrades, they were all of that. See, so this chronology that you see here, see, might not be absolutely perfect, but it comes as close as we can. Because later on in the other editions, you will see the role that don't play Hines, Shaw, and others played in, in helping to advance the movement. You understand? So in even before... Up, go ahead. I was going to say, before we talk about how you can get the book and everything, and I would like to touch upon some of the, the mamas, them too. I see you have um, Bobo Shanti roll call and Naya Bingi roll call, and I don't know which one you would like to touch first or well, touch call. And, that, uh, since we the or whichever we aspect you think is the best one for us to hear, a little snippet of. Well, within the Bobo Shanti roll call, we talk about the, the, the two main empresses that I came to know, and that were the two main matriarchs within the Boba Chad, which is Aljita, what we call um, Empress Memem. You know, her name was Aljita, and Sister Sarah, who were wives of two of the elder priests that walked with Dada from the early Bakawal days. And Aljita, was the first secretary of the African National African National Congress before it evolved into the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. She started with Dada. And when I came to meet Dada in 1972-73, she was the secretary of the Congress. And her virgin was still alive at the time, Priest I and I. Um, I it's a story now. I'll, I'll, I'll give you this little bit about. When I was a youth traded with my father, we used to trudge through downtown there. See, and um, you know, my father is a fighter. He, he never wanted his son to take up the Rasta thing. So he always a, a try to give me a story and show me something like a madman and tell me, say, that happened to you when you smoke ganja and that happened and them they are Rasta and all kind of foolishness. Anyway, one day we I drive through town and I man see this angelic looking person, Jesse Black, Royal Queen. You know, in this royal apparel, she had on full black with her red, gold, and green trimming round her turban, her fall, as a matter of fact. And she had on rick rack, red, gold, and green at the bottom of her skirt. And all over her clothes, she had her colors. And she had on her portion of guidance pin from one side of her blouse and thing. And she just looked so unique, Rasta. And not just unique, but so angelic, beautiful, glorious in her. In, in her in her aura or demeanor, that as a little you don't know nothing about 10 year old, 11 year old, I look through the window and I see and I watch her, I watch her while my father <coughs> stop where him stop. <coughs> and I said, she stop at one stall and she do her thing. And she just she was just floating. She never, she never, you see, like most people are walking and them solidly stepping on the ground. She was like she was levitating there. She was just bouncing from stall to stall. Just so light and angelic, I am. That I man said, Who is that? What is that? I mean, who does she represent? All these questions going through I man's mind. Mm, that your when father, I. Man, your father couldn't tell you that one No. You understand? Him, 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 him just look at him, don't know. So he couldn't answer. It. <laughs> well, him put, him put the other note too, but him just never want to yeah, talk. No, no, no. Can't do Can't do that one him tongue couldn't say nothing bad and him, him didn't want to talk nothing good. Mm. So, so. <laughs> you know them way there. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it's Ryan TC, you know. Come again. It's Ryan TC. Yes. So, because you, when you, when you you someone say? like her, Regin, even if you are a fighter, mm -hmm. the way that you look, you can't fight. You have to just bend up in a yourself and yes, go on. You know them way they start. Oh, she, have the aura. she have an angelic aura that mm -hmm. dumbfounds you, man. Dumbfounds you. I hear you, man. 
So finally, I man get to meet her when I go up on the hill and I said, John, you know, say she had a yes, woman here yeah. with dreams that been haunting me for the longest while. Can't get her out of my head. And I come meet her now. Man, no man couldn't tell her, I say, I have nine man. I say, I know, have nine, the rest. Uh, see, and she was, she was everything that I thought she was. She was so humble. She spoke so different, so biblical. So she was just a different, different queen. I am. See, and so was Sister Sarah. Sister Sarah was a faithful empress. She used to always look after Dada, you know, clean around a Dada place. She always ministered to Dada. She was just a, a very sweet empress, just as our virgin was. Our virgin was um, priest IAP. IAP was one who migrated to, to, to Ethiopia. Yeah, 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 one, man. Of course. one of the sweetest elder anyone could meet in life. One of the humblest. I never, for the years where I know him, I never see him angry but once and for the right reason. See, he has always been a humble, sweet man that gives you peer uplifting words. When he ministered upon the altar, you know, said a service there. From a year, so priest, I, yeah, I man. Man. Two, yeah, man. head to the yeah, yeah, head to the service. You understand? So those are some of the elder, the elder empresses in, in that call right there. With the Binky House, is the same thing. There was Mama um. Baby I, Ma Shanti, That's Mama cool. Bubble, you know, um, Mama Pearl, you know, Pearl was a very close sister in Hawaii. She migrated to Canada after a while and then she came back home. But she's who introduced her to a lot of the elders, them like Bunga Water from the early days. And some elders, some unheard of elders that were some unique, I need man that history do even record. Yeah, you got sit writings about them in mm -hmm. these coming out now. Some man where people don't hear of and know of, but they are unsung heroes in their own right. See, and she introduced her to a lot of those because she grew up in Trenchtown. She grew up with Sister Rita. They were like sisters. You understand? Anyone, you know, interact with Sister Rita will hear Sister Rita talk of Mama Pearl all the while. See, they even toured. She even toured with, Mom, with, 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 with Bob them and Rita them. <laughs> At, anyway, she... Oh, my she and Rita was the first two from back in the day. Used to go over camp when camp did there, Davis Lane, go listen to Dada, reason and culture. That's why when Gilbert did blow down the camp, Rita was yeah, one of the was. first that pull up at the gate and give the father her money. See? And every time she talk about him, every time she say, she asks about the father, how the father, tell him love for me. Is that is just a father she call him all the while and she honor him and respect him from my noir. See? Well, yeah, these are some of the matriarchs and the story of them and how oh they live their life. Some of them I met, some of these, some of them the stories I got from other elders who gave me the details of them life. See, but these ones are heroes that no one knows and they should not go without being knowledge for the great work that they have done because this movement is now a global movement and it, it has become a global movement because of them. They were the exotic people that people heard about all around the world and flowed to Jamaica to come meet. Not Bob Marley. Bob Marley was the one that, that became famous out of that. But it's these people you understand who these other people from around the world flowed and come down to Bakawal and all over the place come sitting with them out of Bull Bay upon the beach and different places, different camps come reason and learn about Ital and became vegan and about Ital and become health food store and about Ital and become non, non meat diet. All of those things came right out of these elders. So we have to write the history of them. And that is what this book is about. Yes, my Lord, I give thanks. Um, I think we would um, seal it there for the moment. Uh, I would encourage each and everyone to 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 get the book. Let me ask you, you um, you you know Bingy Flacco, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Yeah, he was part. Of, he was on one of the webinars. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, that's cool. Of course. How were they talking about? Because um, definitely an individual that seemed to have a lot of, a lot of knowledge and retain a lot of information as it relates to this, um, this, this history here. One more thing before we go in, Virgin. Um, 
Ras, what is it? How you call that? Der, 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 yeah. Who is that king there? I think I hear that name pass my, my ears already. Maybe from the same flock one to it. Youth Black Faith. Youth Black Faith, okay, true. Mm. Them is a, if you read most of the history book, them, them talk about Youth Black Faith and the Sons of Thunder, them yes. and the origin. The man who was the first man to go into court house and when them asked them, them name, the man they now say no other name but Rastafari. Right? The man they no answer to no other name. You understand? The man they stand up in a court house and defend them things some way where, yeah, respect so, the man. Yeah, man. So it's him and Bongo what to start that? Yeah, you that faith and and and, and, and how to be in the G's. Yeah, and 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 um, Pashanti. Pashanti, wow, wow, wow. Because most so, ones say it's. That's a hell that we once need for know about because I'm start playing music amongst that too. But Pashant, you know, is the greatest accomplished musician in the history of the Caribbean when it comes to Naya being. Mm. Why? Created it. He created it. He created it. And I say that with no apology. Well, I was just going to, well, I was just going to say uh, one say that is out of the youth black faith come the Naya Bingi. So I guess. And then it's him, and but the, but the youth black faith at the time wasn't just wasn't a bingy thing, you know. It wasn't a mansion thing. Mm. It was just one that gather, seeing that a pass through them, only if a man pass through them and, and add them thing to it. Like I say, Parshanti even start most that a Parshanti. Mm. That, that's why I'm getting the name Parshanti and Marshanti. Them start a back away with that, seeing and then chada and and chad out and do them own thing. See, but like I said, he was a very accomplished musician. Why? He learned from the Hosse drummers, the the the, the um the Burro drummers, and helped to build this whole tree drum concept that has come to be known as 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 Naya Bingi. See, the, the, the bass, you understand, the the Fundi and the Akete. See. So uh, if you want to know about him, look, read the book. It's in the book. It's the whole history of him. Uh, because there was an interview done by Jay Komiak from the Smithsonian that them have archived in the Smithsonian. I got access to that interview as well as I knew Pashanti myself. I sat at his foot and I was able to write other aspects of him from my personal interaction with him. You understand? So you're getting a, a in-depth history into Pashanti and you know how this whole music that we call Naya Bingi today came into being. Rastafari. Yes, my lord. How could we get the book? Um, Rast well, it Rastafari is, in the 21st century. Ones and ones can email Roots Foundation at Gmail. Saying ones and ones can link I. We will be having it on different social media platforms. Um, and there will be a, a, a website that is being constructed that will disseminate it. And we will also try to get it into bookstores in different places. It's gonna, we are working on the virtual aspect of it. So it will be in, on Amazon and different uh, media distributors as well. We are trying to put it out in all its form that it is easily accessible for everyone because mm -hmm. the series, like I tell the item, um, not because I am part of the construction or I am the, the conduit for the, the, to, the compilation because none of it is mine. I take no, I take no um, credit. Yeah, credit for none of this. I am just writing the history as it was told to me and as, as it, 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 it unfolded, see? So uh, we want to make it accessible because a lot of this has never been written before. A lot of it, you might have heard bits and pieces and this will now add to those bits and pieces and make things a little clearer, you know? It's a knowledge of I and I self, you understand? And it's, it's, it's being done again for the future generation to have the truth of who their elders were and what they did and how they are benefiting from what the elders did today. Rastafari. So the roots is um spell that roots foundation R O O T Z R S. Yes, sir. Z. Okay. Foundation. Yeah. Uh, at gmail.com. Yes, sir. 
All right. So make sure you get that roots with a Z, eh? Roots Foundation at gmail.com. And just a reminder, the the event for the 23rd, which should have been in Ethiopia um, in May, but we're doing it now for the 23rd of um, July. Yes. And, yes. And, and, and we will also be mm -hmm. at yes. some point when everything opens up, be doing a face-to-face -face in Ethiopia because um, it was supposed to be a multi-purpose gathering for the, for the launch of the document, but we are also part of the Pan-African exhibit that is being established at the Isle Selassie University in Addis Ababa. And it was supposed to have its grand opening at the same time too. So all of those events are, are, are still in play. And at some point when we can do it physical, we will be looking to go there and do it physical. Also the mounting of the Marcus Garvey bus that um, Baba Julius is, is championing right now to get Marcus Garvey's bus established there at the AU as a tribute, um, which was agreed upon and, and all of that and all of that. It's just for the moment for it to happen now. It's all of that was supposed to tie into one another. So all of these events are still going to be done physical, even though we are doing virtual aspects of it right now because we don't have a choice. Yes, my Lord, give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life. And give thanks to all the strength and um, just blessed love to you and yours. And I don't know if you have any last word again, just in closing, if not. <laughs> yes, sir. One thing, you know, we yeah. need to be broader in our outlook. To, we need okay. to fix those, you know, um, new set of thinkers where his majesty talked about in that speech, you know. It's not, we, we can't recreate ourselves and we can't go back in our mother's womb, you know, but we can create that mindset by thinking broader, by looking at things from different angles, by letting go the phobias and the restrictions that we place on ourselves and look within our own genome for some of the answers that we see. Because the man said, greater is in I and I than what is in the world. You know, it is encoded in I and I. That's why the elders could decode the Bible. And so let us develop this new understanding. When we say new understanding, you know, looking at things in our more natural perspective, not with the religious lens, you know, but go back to our Ethiopic lens, you know, where our African spirituality is what guided our, our faith and not this new religious uh, dogma and ideology, this Christian philosophy that has been forced down on I and I, see? Give thanks. Yes, my Lord, give thanks. And you don't know we will link again. I'll pause, we are honored that we could have sat with the eye, give thanks to the wealth and knowledge and our blessings and the works for the Rastafari in the 21st century. My Lord, blessed Lord. So once again, even as the good brother said, you could definitely get a copy of the book Rastafari in the 21st century. Um, you just email him Roots Foundation, R-O-O-T-Z, foundation at gmail.com. Easy stuff, Roots, Roots with a Z, R-O-T-Z, -O -O foundation. F-O-U-N-D-A-T-I-O-N at gmail.com. And definitely ask of the book, definitely. Yes, we are headed towards the shock of the hour now. We definitely will be getting into that in a few moments. So those of you who are on the shock of the hour boat, uh, you'll be hearing from me in a few minutes. Remember, those of you who do not know, the Shock of the Hour is an international program, radio program that comes to you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, including this evening. And of course, you get that in your email as soon as the program is done, you get a copy of it. It appears in your inbox every evening I'm talking about. So you could definitely be a part of this Shock of the Hour, the Shock of the Hour subscription team and definitely i mean it's a bit different than what you get here on the youtube from time to time i might just 
feature shock of the hour on the YouTube, on the Facebook for you. So you could hear how it sounds, but it's always celebra celebration mood in the shock of the hour. So make sure you are a part of that. So if you want to be a subscriber to the shock of the hour, just contact us, man. You see the email there, priestisaac27 at gmail.com, and you can become a monthly subscriber. You could, could you could become a six month subscriber, or you could become a yearly subscriber. And of course, the more time that you take, it will be more economical for you. You could also get a one week free trial. It's up to you. I mean, it's, I mean, trust me, it's not something you're going to regret. If you love listening to what's going on here, you're going to super love listening to the shock of the hour. I mean, that's where we really get down. If you want to put it that way, well, we get up. Yeah, we, we don't get down, we get up. So definitely be a part of the shock of the hour. And for sure, make sure that you definitely get our books on the Amazon. You know, you could get all of our books directly from us, precise at 27 at gmail.com, and you get the PDF straight from myself. But if not, you can go straight to Amazon. You can go there right now, just type in Priest Isaac, and um, the books will come up. Anu, Ancient and Modern, The True Biblical Land of Israel, and of course, The Heavens Declare the Glory. And we're going to have a wonderful chalice talk this friday we should be having the honorable prophet mohembe with us and we will be talking about things uh, bobo shanti and and things uh, I I congress wise on chalice talk so definitely you should be ordering your chalice right about now of course everything is the same just contact us precise at 27 at gmail.com and we definitely carry this stuff to another level all right so give thanks for your presence with us again give thanks for the good brethren that came through remember for sure you should enroll your young ones in the international homeschool uh, program we definitely would like to say con congratulations once again yeah to the beloved family talking about our young princes talking about Eloha Daniel and Ashaya um, Fibel, enough blessings to you and the full family shines, and Tammy and blessed love Joel in the house as well. So give thanks, life giver and the keep of life, Holy Manuel Eyes, Lassie Eye, Cha, Rastafari, blessed love.